Are you interested in the current state of the health industry? Want to know more about nutrition, natural medicine, holistic health care, and more? You're in the right place. Welcome to Nutrition Prescription with your host, integrative health and nutrition coach, Angela Atkins. She dishes the dirt on a bunch of health topics with a social consciousness flair. Here's Angela. Welcome to Nutrition Prescription. This is Angela Atkins of YourHealthUnbound.com, and we're here with a new episode, and I'm happy to be speaking with Ashley Keefe. Let me tell you a bit about Ashley. Ashley Keefe is a fitness, nutrition, and health educator dedicated to helping others feel awesome in their own skin. When she's not leading classes at her own yoga studio, Moda Yoga Waterloo, She's applying thousands of hours of holistic health training, meditation, fitness, and leadership experience to create content that supports all parts of the wellness journey at ashleykeith.com. No matter your skill level or knowledge base, Ashley combines her wisdom with leading experts in the field to help smash through limiting beliefs and transform your fitness. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. There's so many things we want to talk about. I think specifically, let's tell people a little bit about yourself, how you got to being a, a fitness and health educator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my fitness and health journey started back when I was a teenager. Um, I actually uh, struggled with severe body image issues as a teenager. And I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin to the point that I developed a pretty severe eating disorder. So at the age of 16, I was hospitalized. And I remember the moment when uh, I was in the hospital and my doctor said to me, like, that you're, you're at risk for a heart attack at the age of 16. And I had a choice in that moment, <laughs> you know, I had a choice to continue down that same path, doing the same thing I had been doing, living, feeling really, really crummy in my body and feeling really bad about myself, or I could make a shift. And so I, you know, when I got out of the hospital, it was a long road to recovery, but I, I started finding ways to move my body, to get into my body and uh, to really start to feel good again in my skin. So I first found yoga, and uh, the aspect of slowing down, <laughs> of breathing, of de-stressing, and of really practicing self-love and compassion was so instrumental to me being able to start to look at myself in the mirror and actually like what I saw, that I wanted to keep diving deeper into it. So I became a personal trainer uh, in university. I started training people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I got very dedicated to lifting weights. And then I started teaching fitness classes and uh, then spin classes. I just kind of wanted to play and explore with all these different ways to move your body. And, and then I wanted to share it with other people because I was getting such incredible results, not only physically, but mentally as well. And that led me down the path of opening my own yoga studio because I wanted to then create my own space uh, where people could come and, and heal their bodies and heal their minds and to de-stress in a world where we are constantly bombarded with ways that we should be or should look. And, uh, and yeah, and now I'm, I'm diving even deeper into that through fitness and, and nutrition uh, coaching. Well, that's, that's a great and compelling story. And in a way, it's almost a blessing that it happened so early in life because now you have this whole history ahead of you that you're going to develop in, just in not only your own personal wellness, but sharing that with so many people. That, that is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, when I reflect back, I, you know, 
it was a really dark time in my life, but I would not change it for the world because it was really a launching pad for everything that I've created in my life, um, for the business endeavors that I've, I've been part of, and for all of the work that I've got to do with people to help them get back to feeling good in, in their bodies and, again, in their minds. So I, uh, I'm grateful for that hardship because I, yeah, it's, it's led me to where I am today. Wow. And, and it's something that I think is a message of hope. I mean, it, you can speak to so many people that, you know, go through body image as a, as a tough thing to have to reconcile when you're feeling poorly about yourself and you've made it to the other side. And it's something that I think people can take away and say, Hey, she did it. She found a way. Let me find that too. Let me, how do I make that journey? And I think that's some of the information you offer people. Yeah. And I think that is really important because I, I'll just say when I was in the height of it, I remember thinking to myself that there was no way that I was ever coming out. Like I, I, have very specific memories of feeling like this was the way I was going to live the rest of my life. And then, like I said, that moment in the hospital with the doctor where I was like really faced with the fact that I, I was damaging my body so much that I was putting myself at risk of a heart attack at the age of 16. Like something lit up and woke up in me that was like, there is another way and I'm going to find it. And I dedicated my whole life to that. And I do want to share that with other people because I get what it feels like to be in the trenches where you're just like, there's no way. I'm wow. going I hear your passion. And I'm certain <laughs> anybody that has, has felt that way or feels that way and who hears that can resonate that, you know, you do get in this dark place, but there is hope. There is a way out. And that's something you were uniquely qualified to help uh, these people, and I'm certain there are many young women who get to this space, but it's not only young people. I think we live in an age where body image is so distorted by what we see in the media, what we, you know, these fantastic tales of what should be rather than what is really true. I mean, mm-hmm. people are not airbrushed. Mm-hmm. So it's something that I think we should learn. If, if Like women in my age, we have to learn to, to age gracefully. Mm-hmm. And I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek because what does that really mean? It really, I, I think that term has, has, has been used to gentle, uh, make things sound gentle for what you're going through. But your body's going to change, and you just have to go with it. I mean, a normal aging is a good thing. You don't want to not age. And you just have to do the best you can to age, not not just gracefully, but healthfully. That's the whole point. If you if you age and live your life with good, healthy habits, then you're going to actually live a better life. You're going to be happier because being healthy is one of the great aspects of being happy. A hundred percent. And I, you know, my mindfulness practice and yoga practice was really instrumental in training me to get comfortable with change because I I mean, I know that I like to hold on to things when they're working really well and I want to push things away when they're not working really well. But part of the practice of opening to all experiences as they show up and, you know, not, not becoming indifferent to them, but really being able to experience them with equanimity you know, then as things do change, we don't have this underlying anxiety that shows up, right? It's just like, oh, you know, everything is of the nature to change. It's a learning experience. If we look at everything, even the bad things as a learning experience, then I think we we take away uh, things differently. Rather than saying something good happened or something bad happened, Mm -hmm. it's something you experience that you learned from, and that learning experience takes you on a different path. Yes, 100%. I think that's so important to change your mindset around that. Um, And, you know, when things whenever something comes up that you might not like or that you feel resistance to or challenged by, reminding yourself, like, 
this too shall pass. <laughs> exactly. And we, we were just talking and I, I brought up, you know, developing those habits, you know, for being living a healthy life. You have developed seven habits of highly healthy people and you're going to share that with us today. And I really want to kind of dive into some of them and hopefully you'll give us some tips. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was inspired by Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which I just finished listening to for the second time on audiobook. I think it's amazing, and I think it's really, really important nuggets of wisdom. And um, as I was listening to it, I'm like, oh, I'm going to apply this to, you know, small, accessible changes that we can start to make right away to improve our health and to prove, improve how we feel in our lives. So I'm, I'm super happy to share those. Oh, awesome. We're, I'm and looking forward to it. Yeah, as we're going through them, if you have questions, we can dive a little sure. deeper. Absolutely. Um, the first one is to breathe. <laughs> you, and know, you know what? I am I'm so glad to hear you say that because every time somebody asks me, that's my number one also. <laughs> the first thing you need to do is stop and breathe because yeah. we don't do it. We're not conscious of it. Yeah, I mean, we take for granted granted from the moment that we are born to the moment that we pass that we're, you know, we are always breathing, but most of the time we're not conscious of it. And very often we're not breathing to our fullest capacity and breathing in an effective way that helps to calm the nervous system down, right? So the very act of breathing consciously where you can feel your abdominals, your rib cage, your chest fill up taking the full expansion of your breath and then letting everything soften down, that in itself three times can dramatically change the whole trajectory of your day. So it doesn't have to be something complicated. It doesn't have to be long. And the amazing thing about breathing is that you have it with you wherever you go. <laughs> you know? That's so true, yes. You know, so when you are driving in traffic and you get frustrated at the person who cuts you off, you can take three deep breaths. You, you get to choose that. And right away it has, you know, an impact on your blood pressure, your stress levels. And it's it almost impossible to be stressed if you're truly doing active breathing. Totally, totally. So that is my number one. And, you know, the body also rids itself of 70% of its toxins through breath. So when you consider, we live in a, you know, toxic environments, right? There's toxins all around us and there's ways to reduce our toxins, obviously. Um, but we want to make sure that we have healthy habits to release them and breathing is one of them. And again, like I said, it's always with you. So it's something that you can always be doing, breathing consciously, knowing that you're letting go of the, the toxins that accumulate in your body as you're doing it. Um, it also, uh, you know, improves the mind-body connection. So you, you start to feel more connected, not only to yourself, but when, you, but when you feel connected to yourself, you can connect more deeply with others, right? And everything is relationship. Um, we don't live on an island. We live <laughs> in communication with everyone around us. So it's important to be able to connect with others. Uh, that, that, that goes back to, I mean, from the beginning of when I started my journey, that goes back to the pillars that I believe that everyone needs to work on. It's not just the physical, it's not just the emotional, but it's the spiritual and the relational that, in, that are included because you have a relationship with everything you come in contact with. People only think about relationships when it comes to a significant other. But there, you have relationships with the entire world at some point. So I think that's a very key key component. A hundred percent. I mean, you're in relationship to the food that you're eating. Like it's not even the. It's not even just people. It's everything. Everything. Um. And and you know when you're in that connection place too, you're able to breathe and you're finding that connection. Like going outside and feeling the sun on your skin. Like that experience can be so beautiful. Like it's, and it's so simple, right? Is that another one of your uh, habits? It, yes, it is, but it comes a little further down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. But it is, but it is, it, it is definitely an important aspect is to really slow down and, and the breathing helps with that to slow down, to get present um, and to appreciate the things that are around you. Um, I mean, there's uh, many other um, benefits to breathing. It helps to 
um, pump our lymphatic system so it improves your immune system. L the lymphatic system is the only system in the body that doesn't have its own pump. It needs to be pumped through either breathing or movement. Um, so super important also helps to release toxins um, mm -hmm. from the body. That's why I have a rebounder. Because yes. I find that if you're so static mm -hmm. that your lymph system isn't moving. And for me, especially in, in, you know, nowadays that I have, I have certain restrictions, get on a rebounder. It gets everything moving. And you breathe so much more deeply. Yes, totally. I, I love rebounding. Um, I talk about it a lot as well. And so that I think is an awesome way to just get moving um, and get your lymphatic system moving. I have it sitting right there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, again, like it, it helps to increase your energy, increase your stamina. It makes you feel more vital when you're breathing. You're more alive. You're more awake. Um, you're more present. And, you know, it aids in digestion. There's so many benefits. So, I mean, I, the list could go on, but really just coming back to the very simple act of breathing and starting your day with it before you even get out of bed. Three breaths. You know, that's all you need. Um, I think they said like 30 or 35 seconds of deep breathing is all you need to make that shift in your entire body so if you think about that you can do that several times a day you can do it wherever you are um, and it's a foundation to good health so what are what's another uh, habit on your list um okay i love to talk about brain foods as well so my second habit is to crowd in the good um, I am not about depriving yourself, though I th definitely think there is benefit to cutting out bad things, you know. I um, call it replacements. But, yeah, yeah. but, I, but I, I believe in, um, I believe everything in moderation, and I believe that there are times where we should enjoy the chocolate cake and the glass of wine. Um, so instead of saying I have to restrict myself and get all these bad things out, I like to talk about bringing in good things. So a couple of my favorite foods that are really, really good for your brain. And when your brain's working, everything else is going to follow. Um, avocados, super delicious. And, you know, of course, I'm just going to interject and say, if you don't like any of these foods, I mean, there's a whole list of them. So you can pick and choose the ones that you do like. Uh, blueberries are awesome. You can buy them frozen, throw them in a shake, you can eat them fresh. Broccoli, like your mom always said, eat your broccoli. There is a reason for that. <laughs> um, coconut and olive oil, high quality. Um, so you want to definitely make sure you're choosing high quality oils, but I believe in, um, bringing in good, healthy fats into your, uh, diet, leafy greens, uh, super important. I mean, we know this, but often a lot of us don't get enough greens. So find creative ways to get them into your diet. I put a whole handful of spinach in my smoothie in the morning just so that I can ensure I'm starting off my day with greens. And if that means I don't get to a salad at lunch, it's okay because I've already had my leafy greens in my, in my day. Um, salmon is another big one. I know that doesn't work for everybody because some people don't eat fish, but it does have a lot of really good healthy fats in it. It's super good for your brain. Uh, turmeric. Uh, there's a lot going around about turmeric being super anti-inflammatory. It's also really, really healthy for, for your brain. Walnuts. They're not my favorite nut, but I do sometimes crumple them up and put them on my granola or, you know, yogurt in the morning. Um, so that's a way to get them in. And I think a lot of people will like this one, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, just a, it's just such a good antioxidant, and it truly is a superfood. I mean, yeah. that, if you're talking about pure chocolate, cacao, yeah. 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 You, want to you want to choose dark chocolate. Sorry, people who love milk chocolate or, you know, those uh, – what was my favorite one as a kid? Coffee Crisp was one of my favorite chocolate bars. It's not that kind of chocolate. You know, you want to choose 70% cacao or darker. 
Um, I buy cacao nibs, which are already, you know, broken up into little pieces, and I put them on, I put them in my smoothies, I put them on my, you know, breakfast bowls or whatever. And yeah, I use cacao powder because it depends on what, like, what protein you might use. Like, I use plant protein in my, in my smoothie. Yeah. So a tablespoon of cacao powder makes it now a chocolate smoothie, and you don't miss anything because... You might have a piece of fruit in there to sweeten it up, and the flavors just blend so nicely. Yes, yeah, totally. That's a great way to also put it in, sprinkling mm-hmm. the powder on. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are those are my favorite top ones. Obviously, there's so many more yeah. healthy things you can well, add. We've got, we've got a list of uh, habits we need to, to kind of okay, so next, <laughs> The next two really go hand in hand. So habit number three is moving your body, and habit number four is sweating. So if you can move your body and sweat at the same time, awesome. Uh, if you are, you, you know, not working out enough to sweat or break a sweat, you can also use a sauna. Um, you know, an infrared sauna helps to draw toxins out of the skin, the, the skin being your, the largest organ in your body. Um, so, but you do want to make sure you are finding a way to sweat it it, whether that's moving your body or using a sauna so uh, you know I think moving your body is pretty self-explanatory but I you know I one thing that I just want to highlight under that habit is that you want to make it enjoyable to you so if you hate lifting weights or you hate going to the gym find a class you know if you love dancing go to a Zumba class or find a fitness class that is revolved around dancing, you really want to find something that's going to keep you inspired to keep going back. Um, And when you don't feel motivated to do your workout or move your body, knowing that it's something that will light you up is part of creating that spark of motivation to keep going. Yeah, I I find that, you know, back in the day, uh, my husband and I used to take uh, ballroom dancing Believe it or not, you'll work up a sweat even trying to do that. Just getting, being precise in all the movements. If you're, if you're not used to it, your body will work hard. So it doesn't really matter what the activity is. It's just keeping your body active. Yes, 100%. So moving and sweating, totally two key things to up-leveling your health. And uh, my fifth habit is to practice gratitude for the things that you have. So this goes back to what we were talking about earlier and really being able to appreciate the small things. Um, You know, I have a journal that I write in every night and I just list all of the things big and small that brought or sparked some joy in my life. And it, it could be just walking outside and feeling the sun on my skin. Um, it, it could be making a connection with a stranger. It could be the first sip of my coffee in the morning, (laughs) you know? So it's, but the more that I do it, the more I realize like, wow, I have a lot of things that spark joy in my life. And I sometimes bypass them really quickly because they're habitual or, you know, I just am not taking enough time to slow down and really recognize them. So I, I think gratitude journaling is really um, is important, but even if you're not writing them down, at least calling three things to mind at the beginning of the day or the end of the day that really spark joy um, that you're grateful for, that you appreciate, and that it starts to train your brain to see more of those things. And actually, I wrote a blog post about this, and I put a little video in it with my um, my 12-year-old niece because when I was home for the holidays, she saw my gratitude um, alarm go off on my cell phone, and she said, oh, that's cool. You have an alarm on your phone that says gratitude. And I said, yeah, what do you know about gratitude? And she, you know, she said, well, it can help you make more friends. It helps you to feel better. It helps you sleep. She started listing all these things because she had just done a project on gratitude at school. So I thought that was really, really, really cool. It's good um, that they're introducing that concept in schools. I Yes, it made me very happy because I think as soon as, you know, when, when kids are young, it's the best time to start to train their brain um, because 
brain's plastic. It can be trained. Mm -hmm. uh, the older we get and more set in our ways does become a little bit more effortful. So, um, you know, I, I wanted to say one more thing on that point. Um, you, because our brains get set in our ways, um, when you feel like you're struggling to remember the good things, know that you're not alone. You know, we all go through that. And it's the small, daily, consistent actions over the long term that are going to support you in making those changes. So be patient with yourself. So true. So true. And I think that's probably the hardest thing for people to do, to be kind to themselves. Mm -hmm, yeah. For sure. For sure. And so um, moving on to habit number six, make time for the things that you love. You know, we live busy lives. We have a lot of responsibilities and it is 100% essential that you're carving out time to do things that really light you up. Um, you know, I just started taking guitar lessons again yesterday after not picking up my guitar for two whole years. Mm. And I just, I felt so joyful in the, in the process of it. So, you know, it, it might seem like you, you don't have time. And when you are in that place, if I don't have time to do these things that I love, you need extra time to do the things that you love and actually everything then unfolds from there because you're more motivated you're more lit up and the it things feeds, you it feeds your soul it does it does if you don't have something that makes you feel alive your soul gets dampened and you really need that 100%. So make time for the things you love. It's so, so essential. Um, one of my coaches actually says he has a three hour rule and he takes three hours every single day to do whatever it is that he wants. And um, I, I realized he and he said this too, when he was telling us this, that it um, a lot of people feel like I have no, there's no way three hours is just not possible. So start with one. But work yourself up if you can, because you don't want to be resentful for the other things going on in your life. So take time for yourself first. And then the seventh habit is keep on learning. You want to keep working your brain as much as you're working your body, because when your mental health is in good order, your self-esteem improves, your creativity and your imagination are more expansive, your energy is higher, um, and life becomes more interesting. So it's the same thing with me picking up the guitar again. You know, I'm training my brain, I'm learning something new, and I felt lit up about the other things that I got to do yesterday because I was, yeah, my brain felt fired. Like I was, yeah. up. you've given yourself something that, that really excites you. And so then the rest of life becomes a little more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Well, they are great uh, things for us to practice, good habits for us to practice, to make sure that we not only have fulfillment and, you know, a good life, but they are healthy practices. I mean, if you do these things, it's not only going to, make you feel better, you know, just internally, but it's going to make your spirit shine through and you're going to have that interaction with other people in the world around you in a different fashion. So uh, they're great. And I thank you for sharing them with us. Uh, okay. If I could just say one thing as a bonus habit, okay. try to have fun while you're doing all of these things. That's great. Because if you're not having fun, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? Really? That, that's very true. That is very true. One of my mentors used to say, you know, she used to say, if you're not having fun, stop doing it. But then realized, obviously, that's not always realistic because there are mm -hmm. things we have to do that we don't like doing. But uh, she, she changed her mindset to if you're not having fun, Try doing it a different way. Exactly. I was I was going to mention. That. I think that that's the that's the key. Yeah. That maybe you're not doing it the way that works for you. So find a way. Yeah. Well, you have given us some great tips, but you also have something great to offer. You have uh, an online show that you have gathered 
experts together to offer great advice on transforming your fitness. Please tell everybody about it. Okay, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm bringing together uh, 20 experts in the field of fitness, nutrition, and mindset. And we're going to be talking about strategies to get more movement into your day, especially if you hate the gym, uh, easy ways to add a health punch to your day, how mindset is key to achieving total body health. Uh, what to do when you don't feel motivated, which is one of my favorite questions to ask people, um, and really how moving, eating, and thinking are all foundational and necessary to optimizing your health and your entire life. Uh, so it's a free series, and uh, you can sign up. You'll be providing the link for people. It's yeah, the there. link will be right in the blog with this podcast, and you'll be able to click through and sign up for free to see the entire series, and I encourage everyone to do so because there are a lot of great experts. There, There's a lot of advice that you're going to get that maybe you've gotten nowhere else, and just like Ashley has shared here, there's some great just little tips that you can do today that's going to make life better. Yeah, I'm so excited, and I hope you'll join us. And, you know, it, whether or not you join this series, you know, let, let me – know what you've learned. I, I really love hearing from people. So Angela, please, you know, pass my email. Yeah, along. there'll be contact information with the blog. And we are just, I am so grateful to have you here with me. We could probably talk all day long about this. I mean, your passion for fitness and, and life in general, I just, I love hearing that because I feel the same way. I'm not the fitness person, but I, I do feel that way about keeping your body moving and nutrition is so important. And that's been my focus now for years is that people need to keep their mind focused on what is going to make them the happiest. And if they feel good and they, they treat their bodies respectfully, they're going to enjoy things much better. And like you said before, have fun while doing it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful. Well, thank you for being here. And I, again, I encourage everyone to uh, sign up for the Transform Your Fitness online show. Click the link inside the blog. You'll get there to register for free, and then you'll get emails with your daily uh, online uh, video to, to listen to the expert. And if you have any questions, certainly you can contact Ashley or myself, and we'll be glad to respond to them. So once again, thank you everybody for joining us on another episode of Nutrition Prescription. I'm Angela Atkins, and until next time, be well. Thanks so much for listening to Nutrition Prescription with your host, Angela Atkins. Find her online at yourhealthunbound.com, Twitter at Angela C. Atkins, and Facebook.com slash Angela Atkins HN Coach. We'll see you next time.